I'm going to do experiment 19 from the elementary science with Vernier manual. It's the bubbles in your bread lab. And in this lab, we're going to take some bread dough um, that's uh, sitting here. This is just a loaf that we bought at the grocery store, some frozen bread dough. And we're going to put about half of it into one bottle, and we will put the other half into the other bottle. And uh, we've attached some gas pressure sensors to these bottles. And we're going to measure the change in pressure as the bread rises. And in one of the containers here, we'll put some warm water, and then we'll put a cold water bath here. So we're looking at the difference in the, uh, how the bread rises depending on the temperature. So you may know that, you know, in general, you want it to be a little bit warmer if you want the, to the uh, bread to rise. Now, we've made an adaptation from this uh, lab as written. As written, it has you do the, um, maybe a cold one first and then a hot one and do two runs. We decided that we could do it all together uh, in one run. So that's where we've made the, the change here. Um, so the first thing that I need to do is to, to uh, get half of this loaf in, in one of these bottles. And one of the uh, concepts that you need to uh, talk with your students is about variables and controls. It's important that we have an equal amount of bread in each each bottle because what we want the, uh, the variable to be is just the temperature of the water bath uh, that's either warming or maybe not so uh, not warming the, the bread there. So the first thing I need to do is, is cut this in half and then I'm going to roll it out so that it's kind of in a snake shape to be able to push it down into the bottle here. So let me just cut this in half. Okay, so I'm cutting it in half. And this, this bread was frozen. We let it thaw overnight in the refrigerator, so it's still cold, um, but not really starting to rise yet. So I'll take the two halves there, and we can put that aside. And um, so I need to roll them out and to get it into a shape that I can manage to get down into that the, uh, the neck of the bottle. This is kind of fun. So you can imagine doing this with, uh, with some kids. You may need to rip a chunk there and... and uh, just kind of get it down where it's narrow enough to get down into the neck of the bottle. So I'll kind of stretch that out here. And uh, let me go ahead and remove the, the caps from the bottle here. And I will just take these out and start kind of stuffing it down in there. I guess I need needs to be a little bit more stretched out. This is a nice glutinous dough there. Uh, in the the lab, uh, in the in the book, at the end of each section, there is a uh, a teacher section, and one of the things that we've done is there is actually a recipe, a simple bread recipe in there, and uh, okay, well, I'm going to use my knife here to help get this down in there, use the end of it. So if you don't want to use the frozen and you want to make some bread dough, you can do that. It's a little messy here. We've also made some uh, curricular ties to uh, other areas. Like we suggested, you know, you could do some, some reading uh, with your kids about um, making bread and, and maybe study that, maybe look at different cultures who are making different kinds of bread as, as a, maybe a part of this. And so it could be a part of an, an integrated curriculum if you would like to do that. And we almost have one of them done. So I will put this one in there and take this one and get the Now one of the reasons that I'm using these size bottles versus say a two liter bottle is that when the uh, bread rises I uh, don't want uh, there to be too much extra air inside of there so that I can uh, maybe see the change in pressure a little better. So, though you might be able to find a bottle with a little bit wider neck, speed up this process a little bit. One of the things that you could also do is if you make the, the bread recipe, make the, the dough on a little drier side so that it's not quite so sticky. Okay, now 
if we look at those, we have about uh, equal amounts there, and it's maybe good to kind of tamp them down just a little bit. And uh, so I'm going to put them into the two pitchers here. And one of the things that I need to do is I'm going to be um, adding water. So I need to do something where I can hold these down. Uh, otherwise, they'll start to float up. They'll, get to, they'll be buoyant. And that's not really part of the lesson, but uh, I mean, I guess you could talk about that. So I'm just going to use a little piece of tape around the neck of each one. So I'll just kind of tilt this back a little bit and put it onto there enough to keep it from floating up. Maybe a little bit more on this one. Okay, now that we've finished taping the bottles down, it's we're ready to uh, attach the, the stoppers here. So I'm going to take the, uh, the stopper and I'll put one stopper in this one. And I will put the other stopper in the other bottle. And right now I have these valves open. I want to let any uh, air that's maybe uh, coming out right now just to be able to escape. When I actually start data collection, I will close those um, so that we can measure any pressure change. Uh, again, we are making a modification because yeah, normally this is done maybe one at a time, but because we had the ability to do two at a time, we decided we would do it that way. And uh, so the next thing I need to do is to plug in the pressure sensors to the LabQuest, and it has the multiple ports and so that I can plug in more than one sensor. So it recognizes that I have the two pressure sensors here. And if we look right here, we can see that our uh, default uh, collection parameters for the pressure sensor is a 900 second time graph, one sample per second. Well, the lab asks you to do only 10 minutes and to do a uh, fewer samples and so we need to go and change that and so it's very easy to do I just tap there and the first thing I will do is I'll just go ahead and change my experiment length so instead of 900 seconds I want 10 and I change the units I want minutes and that's good and then next I will change the sample rate the lab suggests oh maybe 10 samples per minute, so once every six seconds, but uh, I'll say OK. So now uh, I'm going to be ready to begin here in just a second. So I have here, I have some ice water, so some cold water, and I have some warm water. Uh, the lab calls for the warm water to be a, between about 30 and 35 degrees Celsius. Um, you don't want it to be so hot that you, you know, kill the yeast there. So um, I have it, it's pretty warm. And um, the ice water, you know, well, that's pretty obviously, that's nice and cold. And uh, so this will be my warm. Make sure that I have that the way I want it, yes. So warm and cold. And so I'm going to um, pour the water in. And hopefully my tape will hold. Maybe get it up to about there. I'm going to hit collect. And now we're ready to, I need to close the valves so that we can measure the pressure change. So I'll just make sure those are closed. And now we wait. Now, the nice thing about using some of these tools is it allows us to measure things that maybe happen over time. And so we can allow this to run, and then we can come back later and actually uh, look at our results. Well, we had uh, fairly dramatic results. Um, the warm water bath, the bread did rise, and in fact, it did so much that it actually blew the uh, the stopper off there. And um, whereas the the cold water bath, the, the bread there did not do all of that much. And if we look at our graph that uh, 
pressure was going up here. This was the one that was in the, the hot water bath, and there was the one that was in the, the, the cold. So the pressure was indeed increasing, and then it, when it blew the top, it just went right back down to uh, atmospheric pressure. So that's fairly dramatic results there. So, you know, what we're doing is um, providing students a way of um, examining things maybe that they see in their everyday world. Maybe they've had a chance to, uh, to see bread um, uh, rise before, but now they can um, add another dimension to how they're studying that. And here they're, they're seeing the bread rise and they're simultaneously measuring some kind of uh, uh, other physical change, in this case the actual pressure is that gas is produced. And so um, depending on what you're teaching, uh, you may go into in-depth in different parts of that uh, as you go. Um, but it just makes for a really fun experiment uh, that the, the students like to do, and uh, so I hope you give it a try.